Our ability to solve complex problems without AI has plummeted more than 30% in just the last five years. Now, this is not just a shocking statistic to get you to pay attention. It's the sound of your brain cells surrendering to AI. Hello, I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to my innovation studio. And welcome to a new series called Creative Thinking in the AI Age. Now, this new series is about strengthening your uniquely human creativity while using AI as a partner, not as a replacement. Today, we're going to explore how AI dependencies is creating a pandemic of reduced creative thinking and why this matters more than you might realize. Just look around. We've all seen it. Colleagues endlessly prompting AI for answers. Friends asking their devices with the same questions with slight variations. And kids who will reach for ChatGPT before trying to solve a problem themselves. It's happening everywhere. We're witnessing a slow, subtle decline in our collective ability to think deeply, creatively, and more importantly, independently. This cognitive shift is measurable. This is not anecdote. This is measurable. Recent research from the University of Toronto found that college students today show a 42% decrease in divergent thinking skills, or our ability to generate multiple solutions to problems. That is what divergent thinking is about, compared to students just five years ago. The difference? The widespread adoption of AI tools. This isn't just happening in schools. Graded professionals show similar patterns. Marketing agencies are reporting that junior staff increasingly struggle to generate original campaign concepts without AI prompting. Engineering teams face growing difficulties when asked to ideate without computational assistance. But this isn't a rant against technology. Look, AI is here to stay and it offers some tremendous benefits. The real issue is how our relationship with these tools is reshaping our cognitive capabilities. Remember, remember when calculators became widespread? In my case, my first year of college, I was required to use a slide rule. And I'm gonna guess most of you have never even seen a slide rule. But back when calculators were coming out, many feared we would lose our ability to do basic math. They weren't entirely wrong, but we adapted. The difference now is that AI doesn't just handle calculations, it's beginning to think for us. This surrender of our thinking faculties brings us to an uncomfortable but powerful concept from theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Writing from a Nazi prison in 1943, he described a phenomenon he called stupidity. Now, he's not talking about the lack of intelligence but as a social contagion where independent thinking is surrendered to external forces. Bonhoeffer wasn't talking about AI, obviously, but his insight that humans will easily surrender their thinking faculties to external authorities is profoundly relevant today. We're increasingly outsourcing our cognitive heavy lift to algorithms, and our brains are adapting accordingly. Let me show you what I mean with a quick demonstration. Take 30 seconds right now, and I want you to list five uncommon uses for a paperclip. Just 30 seconds right now, we're gonna pause, and you're gonna list five uncommon uses for a paperclip. No use of AI, I'll wait. A few moments later. So how'd you do? If you struggled, you are not alone. In tests conducted before widespread AI adoption, the average person could generate eight to 12 unique ideas. The one I always like is using a paperclip to replace the broken tab on a zipper, as an example. Today, when I run this exercise and when researchers at Toronto run this exercise, that number has dropped to three to five. That's 30 seconds. Ye uncommon idea uses of a paperclip. We've gone from eight to 12, with now with the wide adoption of AI, to three to five. Wow. 
This decline in creative thinking ability is not only disappointing, it has neurological implications. When we regularly outsource our thinking, the neural pathways associated with creative problem solving literally weaken. It's cognitive atrophy. It's like any other muscle. Use it or lose it. And with AI, you are not using it. The consequences are more serious than you may think. Here's what's happening. AI is great at finding the optimal solution when it has defined boundaries using convergent thinking. Give me data, and I'll whittle it down to the best possible answers. If you give AI the right parameters of a problem, it, it'll efficiently identify the best answers within the constraints you give it. But what humans uniquely excel at is divergent thinking. Our ability to break through boundaries, reimagine, redefine the entire problem, and make unexpected connections between seemingly unrelated ideas. This is where breakthroughs happen. Recent research from the University of Bergen shows that while AI can generate more ideas than the average person, the most creative human solutions significantly outperform AI in originality and innovation impact. This is proof. Now here's the paradox. The more we rely on AI, the more we get trapped in what psychologists call AI-reinforced conventional thinking. Let me demonstrate again. In a, in a creative thinking workshop that I ran on not too long ago, I asked participants to design a new coffee cup. Now, many drew variants of the same cylindrical container with a handle. When asked why, they couldn't explain. They simply imposed kind of an invisible constraint. What does a coffee cup look like? It looks like a cylindrical. It's got a handle on it. I'll make it taller. I'll make it fatter. Maybe I'll make it in some different shapes. But they're, they, they've placed this constraint. But when one participant suggested a coffee cup that could be worn as a ring on your hand, the floodgates opened. Suddenly, everybody in the workshop came up with crazy ideas. People were designing coffee cups that doubled as plant holders, that changed color with temperature, and that folded flat for storage. This mental breakthrough reveals what neuroscientists call the first insight phenomena. That moment when one disruptive idea shatters the invisible walls of conventional thinking and unleashes a cascade of creative possibilities. We're not just limited by what we know, but we don't realize we are assuming. And when we look at history's greatest innovations, this ability to think beyond self-imposed constraints, to use our divergent thinking skills, becomes even more critical. The transistor, the invention of penicillin, the theory of relativity, the internet itself, none of these came from incremental optimizations. They didn't come from convergent thinking. They started with divergent thinking. They required creative leaps that defined conventional thinking, precisely the kind of thinking we as a society are at risk of losing in our growing dependency on AI. But here's the good news. Research from cognitive neuroscience and psychology confirms what I've seen firsthand. Our thinking skills can be systematically improved. We can rebuild and strengthen these creative pathways with the right techniques, with the right exercises. This is where the concept of neuroplasticity becomes crucial. Like muscles, cognitive abilities respond to consistent, targeted exercises. And just as we've developed scientific approaches to physical fitness, we now have evidence-based methods for improving creative thinking skills. The research findings are encouraging. In just minutes a day of targeted practice, people show measurable improvements in creative output. But unlike many skills that decline with age, creative thinking can actually improve throughout our lives. Good news for me, if we nurture it, if we put in the effort. Now, Look, we stand at a crossroads. One path, cognitive surrender. It's seductively easy. The other path requires effort, but leads to something extraordinary. 
The partnership where AI handles the routine while we cultivate our uniquely human capacity to imagine what has never existed before. Here's what gives giving me tremendous hope. Our brains remain remarkably adaptable throughout our entire lives. Now, in the next episode, we're going to dive into the science and learn how to rewire our thinking for an AI augmented world without losing what makes us human. So join me in the series we're calling Creative Neuroplasticity, the Science of Enhanced Creative Thinking. This is the next episode in this series. But until then, I'm Phil McKinney. And remember, in an age of artificial intelligence, authentic human thinking has never been more important. Now, if you found a value in today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode in this series. Your support means everything to this channel. It means everything to me. And if you're passionate about creativity and innovation, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon or a paid subscriber on Substack. Links are in the description below. That support helps us create this content. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.